afternoon session. So we have, we're lucky to have two lectures by Michelle on hyperbolic programming. Okay, good, good afternoon. Um, so I find it a bit embarrassing to give two lectures on hyperbolic optimization in front of this audience. Um, but so, uh, especially because many of you know much more than I do about this, uh, the subject, but I'll try to do uh, my best. And certainly I will keep it um, elementary. So, um, so far, even though I missed, uh, because of a flight cancellation, I, I missed um, the talks yesterday, it seems that you've been mostly dealing with uh, stable polynomials um, and real stable and so on. And um, so I first want to um, define uh, hyperbolic polynomials and study some of their properties. So I'll be dealing with um, polynomials, um, multivariate polynomials, uh, P um, of, um, which are uh, real polynomials. And I will mostly be, I will be only dealing with homogeneous polynomials. Um, of degree D, meaning that um, P of alpha X is equal to alpha D uh, P to the X. So if I have such a polynomial, um, I'll say that P is, and I should say that most of the things that I'm going to be saying, many of the things originate in uh, the work of uh, Gerding in the 50s um, and um, with more recent things by some of the people in this audience. Um, and so let me first define what is a hyperbolic polynomial. So P um, is hyperbolic in um, direction uh, D in uh, N with D uh, not a zero of P, so um, P of D um, non-zero. Um, if for all X, if I look at the univariate polynomial, um, which uh, is P of X plus TD, I'm sorry, do you insist on calling the degree and the direction by the same Oh, yes, right. I'm sorry, that, that's a good point. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> thank you for telling me at this point. <laughs> so I, I, I would have noticed it at some point, and so it's, it's good that you mentioned it right now. Um, so let me call the direction E. Um, so E is not necessarily the all, all one vector, it's uh, any direction. So T um, um, X plus T E, um, if um, this is, um, as real, uh, if this uh, has only real roots. So I'll, I'll give you a, um, a relation with uh, stability um, probably a bit later, um, but um, let me for now define it that way. Um, in fact, I will Sometimes I uh, look at this polynomial, and sometimes I will look at um, P of x minus TE. So clearly it's the same condition. And um, I will call these real, these real roots, I will typically call them lambda 1 of x, lambda 2 of x, and so on. And since it's a polynomial which is homogeneous of degree d, so that would be lambda d of x. Um, now notice that to be to be precise, I should say that um, it's 
in the direction E. So these lambdas um, depend on E. So let me give you some examples. So let me start with the most, um, the most basic example. And that's P of X, which is the product of the X sub i's, i1 to n. And, um, and let's say the direction E is the, um, let's say, the all one, all one vector. Um, so clearly in that case, P of X minus TE is the product of the X sub i's minus T sub i's, and uh, uh, X, X i minus T, and so the, the um, the roots on the um, the roots are the um, uh, are given by the exabytes. So that's um, so that's a, that is hyperbolic, and um, and it's actually hyperbolic not just in that direction, but for example, but it's hyperbolic in any um, e, which is um, in the uh, positive ontent. Um, so that's a very basic example. Um, let me um, generalize this a tiny bit. Um, we could also look at P of X is, for example, the product um, of, um, of a bunch of uh, linear, so L sub i is linear in X. And so, in that case, um, well, these are linear. Um, and so, in that case, also we have that um, if I look at p of x minus uh, t e, so and I would take um, um, an e which is not a um, not a zero of this, so such that l i of e is non-zero for every every i. So I would also get a um, hyperbolic polynomial. I give you another example. Um, let me take um, p of x is um, x uh, n squared minus the sum over i one to uh, n minus one of the x i squared, and let me take as direction e to be the direction that's um, all zeros, except uh, the last coordinate being one. And so for example, in, in um, when, n, um, when n is, let's say, three, um, the picture uh, would be the following if that um, this is, let's say, x three. Um, and so the, if you look at the zeros of this, you get um, you get um, so these are the um, solutions. This. And so, if I take if I take any if I take as my direction um, zero zero one, if I take any x, and I look at um, in the direction of x three, so if I look at the univariate polynomial along these lines, so clearly, so that's a quadratic polynomial, and it will have two uh, two roots uh, along uh, along that. So more generally, um, in n dimensions, that's also hyperbolic. Um, why is that? So if I look at p of x minus t uh, e, I get that that's um, x n minus t squared minus uh, the sum i one to n minus one of x i squared. So that's t squared minus uh, twice xn t plus um, xn squared 
minus sum over i um, up to n minus 1 of xi squared. And so the discriminant is, uh, discriminant is going to be um, for x squared n minus for x squared n plus, um, uh, plus this xi squared. So it's uh, just this term, and indeed that's uh, non negative. So that has only uh, real roots. Um, so these are two very basic examples. Um, a more interesting example is um, if I look at symmetric matrices um, and I look at them as vectors in um, in dimension n, n plus 1 over 2, so representing a symmetric matrix. And um, I look at P of x, which is the determinant of the corresponding symmetric matrix. So this is a bit of abuse of notation, but um, you certainly understand what it means. And um, I take as my direction, hyperbolic direction, uh, what corresponds to the identity. So in that case, what is P of x minus Te? It's just the determinant of um, x minus Ti. And since that is a symmetric, so, so by big X, I meant the matrix. Maybe that corresponds to little x. Um, so since that's a symmetric matrix, um, eigenvalues um, are real. So that's the char characteristic polynomial. So that's also a uh, very basic example. Um, so we could do that also. We could do the same thing over complex omission matrices. Um, let me not discuss that too much. Um, let's uh, do another example. Let's look at. Um, at p of x, which is the determinant, and that's uh, one of the most important examples, determinant of, um, so the variables are x1 up to xn, so xi times ai, where the a sub i's <coughs> are symmetric uh, matrices, and um, and let me, uh, for now, let's, let's take a direction E um, such that um, the corresponding matrix sum over I of E, I, A, I, let's say is the identity. So if, um, if, that's, um, if that's the case, then again, uh, P of X minus T, E, is just the determinant of the sum over i of xi minus t um, xi minus t uh, ei times uh, ai, which is the determinant of the sum um, over i of xi ai minus t, uh, the identity. And again, I have the characteristic polynomial. And so um, it's a uh, real voltage. And I could have done the same thing if instead of having such an e, I have um, an e such that the sum over i of e i a i is uh, positive definite. So if it is positive definite, then I can also um, in that case, I get t times that, and I can pull out um, the square root of that um, and get also the characteristic polynomial of the symmetric matrix. OK. Um, let's do a more combinatorial example um, that we also saw this morning, and it looks like maybe yesterday as well. Um, so let's take the spanning tree polynomial. Um, 
of a of a graph G. So um, so by that I mean that we look at um, we take the sum of all spanning trees. Um, let me maybe denote by that by B. So these are the spanning trees. Um, T and B are the product of all the um, elements in T of um, Xi. And um, as we saw this morning, we can use um, we can use um, the Cauchy-Binet formula, for example, um, to um, show that this is hyperbolic. Um, let's take the direction of hyperbolicity. Let's take that to be uh, the all one vector, so one um, over all the edges um, of the graph. And um, one way to show that this is um, this is um, hyperbolic is to show that is to use the Kirchhoff's matrix uh, three theorem, which says that um, P G of X is the same thing as the determinant of the sum over all. Um, and so I'm going to reuse E. Sorry, uh, Sasha, but uh, uh, over the edges E. So that's a different E than this E. Um, over the edges E of, or maybe edges I, okay, fine, Xi times um, Li, but that doesn't look good, so E, uh, <laughs> Le. Um, where Le is the, um, the Laplacian um, corresponding to Edge E, except that to make it so what Cheyenne had done this morning was to get rid of, I mean, to add one, one transpose, uh, but you can just get rid also of a row. So, um, um, so it's, um, uh, so, um, so in, in which you, you just get rid of one row um, of the Laplacian uh, matrix. Um, and what Cheyenne has shown as well, let me redo it just uh, for the sake of completeness. So, so now that it's in this form, you see that it's precisely um, of, of this form, and so uh, that's, um, that's hyperbolic in, um, in any direction from which you get that this is positive definite. And for example, if you put all ones on the, on the edges, you get the sum of all the uh, Laplacian. And so if the graph is connected, that's going to be positive definite. So another way of doing it is to use uh, the uh, Cauchy-Binet formula uh, that uh, Cheyenne mentioned this morning. So um, what you can do in that case, you can look at the matrix M, which is a um, v minus 1 times E matrix. So it's indexed by the columns, the rows are indexed by all, all vertices except one, and the columns are indexed by all edges. And then so you take, um, you, you take that um, incidence, that adjacency matrix, except that you remove uh, one row, and then the claim is that uh, PG of X is uh, simply the, um, um, the determinant of M times a diagonal matrix with these unknowns X times M transpose. And um, the way to see that is to use the, so the, so, so you have a, a product of a matrix times itself, uh, times another matrix, and you take the determinant. And so by Cauchy-Binet, that's going to be the, um, this is equal to the sum over all subsets of size V minus one. So over all subsets 
uh, t of size um, v minus 1 of, um, of the determinant of m restricted to that subset. Can you see that low? No, probably not, actually. On the side screen. Um, and um, I, um, and so then the um, the product over these um, edges in T of X E and then times the determinant of um, M transpose restricted to these um, to um, these elements. So that's also the same thing as this. So that's just this squared that will save me some space. Um, so that will save me some space. And um, the crucial thing is that the determinant of M uh, T, so since this matrix M is totally unimodular, that's a totally unimodular matrix, meaning that every submatrix, every square submatrix has determined either 0, 1, or minus 1. So it's 0 um, when this is, um, when this as a, um, as a cycle. And so it's going to take to be 1 or minus 1 precisely when t is a spanning tree. And so that's going to be reducing to the sum over all spanning trees of the product um, over the variables over that um, spanning tree. So that shows that um, this is um, that the spanning tree polynomial corresponding to any graph is actually hyperbolic in that uh, direction. So this could have been the same thing if instead of saying the spanning tree polynomial, I had said um, I take a, the basis of a regular matroid. So what is a regular matroid? It's just a matroid which can be represented um, can be represented over any field. And um, in particular, another way of defining it is that it's a matrix that can be represented by a totally un unimodular matrix. Um, so if in that case, I mean, it's, there is no graph. So if this is, so take a um, regular basis of a regular matroid. Um, and so in that case, um, you get that you're summing over all. Um, so that's the matrix that represents, that's a totally unimodular matrix um, that represents the independence in that regular matroid. And then when you take, um, when you take that uh, polynomial, you get that um, you get that you sum over all bases of your regular matrix of this, which is uh, in um, so it's zero if it's not a basis, and it's uh, one or minus one if it is a basis. So that gives you a one, and. Um, and, and so you get that P of X as such a representation, but such a representation is precisely the same thing as this example five, namely it's the sum, it's the determinant of, determinant of these sum over I of XI, um, MI, uh, MI transpose. Okay. So the assumption is it's regular, and that implies that this matrix is totally unimodular. Right. So, so a um, 
So you can define regular matrix in different ways. One way, um, one, one typical definition is that a regular matroid, so um, M is, so definition, M is a regular matroid if it can be represented, can be represented over the wheels by a totally unimodular matrix. Or not on definition, that's one definition. Not on definition, which is equivalent, is that it can be represented, can be represented over any field. Um, that's, that's equivalent. So the graphic matroid corresponding to spanning trees um, is a regular matroid. So um, that was a few examples of, uh, of um, hyperbolic um, polynomials. Oh no, there's nothing behind. OK, I was hoping so. But uh, um, so let me now define the hyperbolic cone. So if, um, if I have a hyperbolic polynomial, I can define, I can associate it with it, a hyperbolic cone. And that's the set K plus, which is, so that depends on the polynomial P, let's say. It's the set of X in Rn plus, in Rn, such that the corresponding roots, so we know that if we go in the direction E, we have only real roots. And so we'd like the roots, these real roots, to be positive. So lambda I, all i. So that's uh, that's what is defined as the uh, hyperbolic cone. So that's um, one definition. For example, if I take um, if I take this example, this three-dimensional example, and I take this e, then you can uh, see that it's going to be the interior of um, this, so that's the ice cream cone um, on the second order cone. And let's see, let's, let's, uh, um, and, and one, one obvious property of it is that, um, so one basic fact is that uh, the direction E belongs to um, the hyperbolic cone. Why is that? It's simply because if I look at the polynomial uh, in E and I subtract TE, since it's homogeneous, that's 1 minus T to the D times PE. And so the roots will be uh, all equal to 1. And so definitely they're all positive. So um, E belongs to uh, K plus. In fact, I mean, it's. Uh, um, so let's see what it gives um, for all the examples that we saw. For the first example, uh, for example one. So are you assuming P of yeah. E is positive? Excuse me? Are you assuming P of E is positive? Um, I'm assuming that P of E is non-zero. Um, I was not assuming, I mean, it, it doesn't really matter. Um, and you could assume it. Or you also, uh, it, I mean, it's becoming now important whether you're adding or subtract. Right. right. So, so in my definition of lambda i's, in my definition of lambda i's, I'm subtracting. Yeah. 
You subtract. Okay. In my definition of lambda i. So it's the, the, the roots of p of x minus t e. But it doesn't really matter. It doesn't it. really matter in terms of the definition of hyperbolicity. So it's, if it is hyperbolic, uh, I mean, if it was in the other direction, I would probably define less than here. So, okay. um, so just, uh, just a quick thing is that in the example one, which was p of x was the product of the x sub i's, um, what is my cone? My cone is simply the, since the eigenvalues were the x, it's the x which are strictly positive. So that means that it's um, on n strictly positive, so the positive ordinate. And let's take the uh, second example, which is p of x is xn squared minus the sum of i of xi squared from 1 to n minus 1. So in that case, the cone is um, just the second, what's known as the second order cone, or at least it's open version. So that's the, sec the set of x in Rn, um, such that uh, in, Rn, um, in Rn, such that um, xn is uh, positive and uh, the sum of xi squared i 1 to n minus 1 is strictly less than xn squared. So that's from this example. Um, from that example, um, so what are the x for which the characteristic polynomial is only positive uh, root? So that's the, um, the eigenvalues must be positive. So it's going to be k plus is going to be the set of positive definite matrices. So, um, so s, um, so let's say x, such that x is uh, plus the definite. Um, so in this case, it's going to be uh, k plus is going to be the set of, um, set of, uh, uh, x such that um, so the the um, so it's um, the eigenvalues of sum of x i a i so it's going to be the set of x such that sum over i of xi ai is positive definite. And um, so these are the hyperbolic uh, cones, and usually we close them. So, and I'll, def I'll um, I'm going to um, write by k plus plus <coughs> the closure of uh, k uh, uh, plus, and um, um, so k, um, so this is k plus plus is um, called a um, spectra region. Now a few things that I'd like to ma so let me mention a few things. So first, in 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 example one, I had also mentioned the case in which p of x is the product of linear functions. So when you look at the product of linear functions, what you get is k plus is the intersection of the half spaces defined by these linear functions. And so that's a polyhedron cone. So any polyhedron cone can be viewed as a hyperbolic cone. Um, so a very basic uh, result. Um, another thing that I'd like to emphasize is that the, um, you might have many different hyperbolic uh, polynomials that correspond to the same hyperbolic uh, cone. So there might be many representations, um, many representations of the same hyperbolic uh, cone. So for example, um, 
let me uh, skip that for a second. Actually, let me um, let me get back to that in um, a bit later. So. Um, So we, I could have um, defined the hyperbolic cone. So um, Gaunding. So all this is due to uh, Gaunding, and he showed also that, in fact, the um, k plus is the um, component. So if you look at, if you if you take on n and you remove um, all the zeros of your polynomial, it is the connected component that contains E. So K plus is the component of um, Rn minus the set of X containing E. And, and this is uh, this is easy to see. You can do this more very basic exercise. Um, we'll do it in a second, I guess. Um, now, um, and um, but the main what's um, the the main result which makes is important from, uh, for optimization um, is that k plus, or let's, let's take the closure, is convex. So it's a convex code. So it's not completely obvious. So for example, if you take, uh, I mean, it's definitely not obvious. If you take, for example, this polynomial, and if you look at the connected components, once, once you remove the zeros, definitely these two are convex, but the, the remaining is definitely not convex. So it's, um, it, it, it's, this, is, uh, this, is, this needs several ex exclamation marks. That's, uh, that's a very important, uh, a very important result. So let me... Um, I'd like to show this to you. Um, it looks like I'm going very slowly. Um, but let me, before I prove it, maybe I'll prove it either, either in the break or maybe in the second half. But before I do that, um, let, let me mention um, some other result that, would, uh, that implies that uh, fairly easily. So let me um, write that maybe as a proposition. And um, we'll prove that later, is that, um, that in fact, this convex cone, I said it depends, so these lambdas depend on the direction I'm using E. But that's not quite true in the following sense, though. So let's assume that P is uh, an homogeneous polynomial that's hyperbolic in, in direction um, P and uh, in direction E. And so if, if I take another vector, which is in that uh, hyperbolic cone, then in fact, then P of X is also hyperbolic in direction F. And um, and uh, k plus so if I if I put an e here to say that I define this with respect to e, then the cone that I get with respect to f is actually the same as the one with respect to e. And this is not surprising um, once you see this. So, um, uh, but that's um, that's. Uh, important to, um, to see, but now that, so let's assume that it's hyperbolic in, in, uh, in direction F for now, and let me show that it's, uh, that you get convexity out of it. So let's look at, um,
Let's look at my uh, um, K++. And I'd like to show that it's convex. So I'll take uh, two points. And I'd like to show that any, any point along the line uh, will also be in uh, K++. Now, since I can, since by, if I take any point, I can assume that that's the direction in which the polynomial is hyperbolic. So that means that I can assume that, um, let's say these are E and F, so when my polynomial is, is uh, hyperbolic in direction E, also in direction F, so I have E of F in um, uh, K, um, let's do, let's actually work with K plus, with K plus, ooh, good. Um, and so now let's look at a um, convex combination of these two. So let's call, let's say X, to be lambda e plus one minus lambda f. And now um, I'd like to show that, um, I need to show that x is also, um, x is also in kf, in k plus. So um, what I need to do is I need to look at, so my direction of hyperbolicity is e, so I need to look at p of x, minus te and show that the roots of that of these univariate polynomial are all um, positive so what is this x is equal to that so that's um, lambda e plus 1 minus lambda f minus te and so this is um, I'm going to um, I'm going to let's say use uh, homogeneity to show that this is one minus lambda to the d times the polynomial evaluated in f minus uh, lambda minus uh, t minus lambda divided by one minus lambda times e. Sorry, you want to show it's hyperbolic with respect to x? I want to show that, no, what I want to show is that x, no, I want to show that x belongs in k plus, because I want to show convexity. Okay, so. so I'm assuming that, I'm assuming e is in k plus, f is in k plus, I take a convex combination, I'd like to show that x also belongs to k plus. Um, so I need to look at, my direction of hyperbolicity is E, and I need to look at um, I need to look at the roots of that and show that the roots are positive. So the roots of that are the so the T such that uh, this is zero, um, but F belongs to my K plus. So it means that if I look at F minus S E the roots of that are positive. So it means that t minus lambda divided by one minus lambda are positive if t gives me a root here. And so that means uh, that t is indeed positive. So um, that shows that the picture is not like this. Um, and so x, so that x belongs to k plus. I will, I will get back to, um, to showing this uh, and, and, and relating to um, stability, um, but maybe let me, um, let me continue uh, a bit more. So, um, so let me get to what, what is referred to by hyperbolic optimization. So now that we have a convex cone, um, this is great because we can, we can define a convex optimization problem and use all the machinery from, from uh, convex optimization. So, um, so if I have a hyperbolic um, 
cone uh, k uh, plus plus, I take the closed version. Um, I, well, actually, I mean, I could define it over the uh, um, local version. So I'm going to look at minimizing uh, Cx. So, so, so x is in on n, so this is uh, x is in on n, and then I'm going to have that x is supposed to be in that cone, and also some linear um, linear function. Also, um, let's say um, um, ai uh, ai x. Um, no, AX is e. And so this was uh, considered. This was considered by Guler um, in '96, and then also a lot of uh, theory was developed also by uh, Jim uh, Jim Reinecker. Um So that's that's what is known as a hyperbolic optimization problem. And. Um, and the nice thing is that pretty much every convex optimization, every class of convex optimization that's known fits into that. So, so certainly uh, linear programming or linear optimization is a special case um, when the hyperbolic polynomials is the first example. The second order uh, cone programming is um, the case in which uh, the cone is the second order cone, which was example two. Semi-definite programming is, so, uh, second order cone uh, programming. Um, Semi-definite uh, programming um, also over uh, complex emission matrices or uh, real symmetric matrices fits also when um, when we had the uh, determinant of a symmetric matrix as the hyperbolic polynomial. So it actually um, gives a, a, a lot of uh, different um, uh, possibilities. So the exact, the exact power of hyperbolic optimization is actually a very uh, big open question. And uh, it's, it's, I will get back to that, but it, it's not completely clear whether it's e, e, it, whether it goes beyond SDP or not, but that's that's I th I don't think that that's the main the main question, and I'll I'll uh, try to uh, get back to that um, soon. Um, so before I um, so let me get back to K plus plus and um, mention um, another. One view of K plus plus, or K plus, um, and that's the following. So if I look at P of X plus TD, and, and this time I'm using a plus and not a minus, uh, so in this case it's convenient. So, uh, and it's not D, but it's E, X plus TE, so, um, so that's a polynomial in T, and um, the, it's going to be P of E times uh, T to the D, and then there will be terms, uh, lower order terms. Um, so there will be a T, D minus 1. Let's call that uh, A1 of X. Um, and then there will be an A2 of X times t d minus 2, and so on, um, plus a uh, d of x, uh, which is the constant term. And um, so let's try to relate uh, k plus to, um, to, to this. So the first thing to notice is that I can give an alternate uh, view of this because I know that the roots 
of these are the lambda 1 of x, lambda 2 of x, and so on. So this must also be equal to the... Um, actually, from, um, so it's going to be the product... Of, so if, if this was a minus, it would be, um, it would be the lambda i of x minus t, but since it's a plus, this becomes a plus. So that's the product over on the i's, and this is uh, p of e. So this polynomial, this expression and that expression must be the same, but I can, I can write this expression in terms of um, symmetric, uh, the elementary symmetric functions uh, involving the, the roots or the eigenvalues. So this is uh, P of E times um, uh, T to the D plus, and then we have the, if I look at the symmetric elementary function uh, let's go, so sigma 1 of the vector of lambdas times t to the d minus 1 plus and so on. So the general term will be sigma i of lambda of x times t of d minus i. And so I must have equality uh, between the corresponding terms. So the ai of x, ai of x um, is equal to these sigma i of these uh, lambda x. Well, that's the um, elementary um, symmetric function um, of order i uh, of uh, degree of order i in um, in n variables. So that's the, um, I mean, I won't write it, but you know exactly what it is. Um, so, so from that, um, you can get a different characterization of K plus. Um, so, which is uh, due to uh, uh, and that's saying that um, k plus is the set of x such that such that for all i a i of x is positive. For example, the, the positive definite matrices are the matrices such that all the elementary symmetric functions of the eigenvalues are uh, positive. And the, the proof is quite simple. It's, it's, it's elementary. Um, so let's look at, let's now show that k plus is included in that set and then k plus so for this one, um, so if I take if I take an element in K plus, all the roots are positive, and so if all the roots um, if all the roots are positive, clearly the A sub i of X will be uh, will be positive as well, and so that's obvious. Um, the converse is also true because if I take um, if I take an x such that a i of x is positive for every i, then um, if a i of x is positive for every i, it means that for any non-negative t, this is going to be positive. So that. Um, so that implies for x such that a i of x is positive for every i, this implies that p of x plus t e is non-zero um, 
and um, for any t that's non-negative. And so that precisely means that x is, um, x is um, well, so then you have to change the sign again. So you have to change the sign. So when I take, uh, but it shows that x is indeed in the um, uh, in, uh, k plus. So, so that shows that, in fact, k plus can be viewed as the uh, finite, um, finite intersection of um, um, finite intersection of polynomial equations. So it's a semi-algebraic. is open and uh, k plus plus is uh, closed. Um, so what's the sketching again? So it's from 2 to uh, 3. 320, but uh, that's including the... So I can take a break. Yeah, okay. Um, questions? I've been going quite slowly, so... Um, so can you elaborate on this? You made some comment about how we don't know if this has more generality than STPs. Right. So um, um, let me do that after the break. Maybe. Yeah. I'll uh, I'll, I'll get. Uh, I mean, that's a, that's a big that's a big important question. Right. Um, so um, so simply, it's. Um, so let me I can um, yeah may, maybe let's uh, let me answer that after the break um, any other question at this point so let's take a break so uh, so should I stop just for a few minutes give some questions maybe and then, um, you mean the exercises? Yeah, the exercises. Yeah, that sounds good. Um, yeah, I yeah I don't have I, I haven't prepared some very difficult exercises. Uh, um, so or, yeah, maybe let's let's pause for two or three minutes uh, or five minutes, and then I'll uh, continue and give exercises.